I'm not even using all these mushrooms. I really don't know why I just busted up in the bag. But today I am making a mushroom goulash. Um, I'm excited about this. And again, I've never made this dish before, but I always love the challenge of mushrooms because my wife hates them. And if I can make a dish that she would dig, which I think this will be, I'm golden. So, 15 minutes or less, we got it on the clock. You guys are cooking with me in real time. Here we go. So, first step, get a big, big ass pan on a high heat, cool? Now let's talk shrooms for a sec, specifically mushrooms, not the ones you trip up. Although, I do gotta get some rice on before we talk shrooms. So, I'm gonna grab a pot. I always have a kettle on the boil right when I get home. And then I'm gonna throw this pot on the heat, just a high heat. And I'm actually gonna grab a mug, just like an everyday mug. So I'm gonna make a brown rice in literally less than 10 minutes. And this, you can buy these rices now. They're parboiled and then steam dry. And they absolutely do the trick. So I'm gonna do one part boiling water to one part rice. So I've got boiling water, it's going in the pan. I'm gonna do two of these because I'm gonna do two cups of rice. But how easy is that? I mean, like, I would say one mug full for every two people. So this is gonna serve four. All right, so I got that, and then I've got kind of my quick cooking. This is brown rice. So again, I'm just gonna fill this up. This is all the measuring you gotta do. I mean, it's like, big deal, right? Right into the water. And then a little bit more. How easy is that? There's nothing wrong with quick cooking rice. Normally brown rice, it takes like 45 minutes to cook. I, I don't have that time. Wish I did, wish I did. All right, so I'm gonna let that come to the boil. I'll give it a pinch of salt. I'll give it a pinch of salt, not against it. All right, shrooms. I'm of the nature where the dirtier the shroom, the tastier the food. And a lot of, um, you can see, they're kind of just dirty like that. This is totally, totally edible stuff. You can wash it with a little brush, right? It is a complete, complete myth that you can't take these under the water like this, like over your sink, and scrub them. The reason why a lot of recipes say don't do that is because shrooms are, they're kind of like, you know, sponges, and they just kind of like suck up all the water, and so they think that it gets waterlogged. It doesn't, it's totally fine to do, don't worry about it. So these are called chanterelles. I'm just kind of peeling them like string cheese. You don't even have to chop them. And these are harder to find and they're kind of fancy schmancy. These are like your everyday button mushroom. You can just crush it up with your hands like this or give it a quick little chop. I hate perfect, you guys know this. So, you know, my, my thought is make it kind of look rustic, homemade because it is homemade and just like, you know, why have it, why try and make every mushroom that perfect, perfect kind of cohesive look? Just kind of get them in the pan, they'll break down, they're all gonna look delicious in the end. Cool, so one trick I will say around mushrooms is don't think that you need to add salt right away. When you add salt, it kind of draws out the moisture and it boils the mushroom as opposed to cooks it really, really crispy, which is what we are after because that is the only way my wife will eat it. All right, I've got these little guys, look at these. Look these cute? I'm just gonna kinda add them whole. Again, I like lots of variety of mushroom. I think it kinda just adds a lot of personality to the whole thing. And I, I don't know why I busted open the bag. I was really excited to play with all these mushrooms. But I will put these back when the time is right. Got one more big one. Get in there, get in there. It's a good one. All right, so mushrooms are cooking. Now, I've got a totally dry pan right now. No oil, no butter. What's gonna happen is, is they're gonna kinda blister and pop and bust open, and you really don't need fat to do that. I will add a little bit of butter later on, but for right now, we're good to go. Again, no salt. So I'm gonna grab some other ingredients to make goulash. I, I honestly, maybe in culinary school I made goulash, but I'm just making it because I felt like, can you make it in 15 minutes or less? It seemed like a good challenge. Goulash typically is made with beef, cubes of beef. So this is kind of my vegetarian option. I think it's still gonna bring that oomph, a little bit of flavor. All right, I'm grabbing some mustard. Oh, I want some garlic. 
I thought I had an onion, but I don't, so I'm not gonna sweat it. All right, garlic, put all my weight on it. I'm gonna grab like two cloves, bust these guys open. Cool. Slide out the garlic, just like that. Beautiful. Now this is my little trick. I like to put a little salt on the garlic and then bust it in the salt and chop it up. And just the same reason that I didn't add salt to those mushrooms is the reason why I'm adding salt to the garlic. It's gonna draw out the moisture and make the garlic more pungent. Also, the garlic is gonna, I mean the salt is gonna act like a million little knives that's kind of just breaking down the garlic for me. So it's not just my one knife, it just kind of helps me get it nice and fine because I want this, I want this pretty fine. Beautiful, looks really good. You can also just use like one of those garlic presses. I'm not a chef that's against a garlic press. I love a garlic press. All right, I've got mustard, I've got that. This is by no means traditional, so no judging. Let's take a look at these. Okay, take a look real quick. So they're starting to kind of sweat and you can see the water coming out. That's a really good sign that it's time to add something to the pan. I've got a little bit of butter. This is, is this how the butter gets put away in your house? I just wanna know, is this how the butter gets put away in your house? My wife would say it's me. I'd probably blame it on my kid, who's four months old. So it probably is me, but I don't know. It's not gonna hurt. People leave their butter out on, on the counter, so it's not the end of the world, but I am gonna add a fair amount of butter. This is probably about three tablespoons. The reason why is because, just like I said with the water, these mushrooms will soak up the butter. So you want to add extra because this pan's going to go dry very soon. All right, I'm going to grab a spoon. It smells really good. All right, I'm just kind of toss this around. Those look really good. All right, checking out our rice. It's been boiling. I'm just gonna turn it down to like a medium heat. And Howard, can you get in this pot? So you can see the rice is like almost cooked. So I'm literally just gonna take a lid, put it on top, let it go for like five minutes. I've got seven minutes, 51 seconds. I'm not stressing yet, but we're not at the fish line. The thing that makes goulash goulash is paprika. I like smoked paprika. It gives it that kind of campfirey, outdoor PNW thing, PNW Pacific Northwest. So to me, it kind of just reminds me of like going on those retreats. Howard, did you go on school retreats? I did, but not in the PNW. You did not go in the PNW. Well, I did in the PNW, and you'd go to bed, you'd smell like smoke, you'd wake up and it'd be freezing, and you'd like hear the gorgeous waves. I know it sounds like a really hard childhood, but it was a really cool thing to do, to go like Lord and Flies. Is it Lord and the Flies? It's Lord and the Flies and stay out in the woods. I get freaked out camping though, always have been. Howard and I almost died on a camping trip. True or false, Howard? It's actually true. Yeah, it's actually true. All right, so the mushrooms are looking nice and brown. I'm adding garlic to that. And then this is kind of a zinger, tomato paste. So what is tomato paste and why do you need it? Tomato paste is cooked down tomatoes to the point where it's almost dry. A really intense, intense tomato flavor. So I'm gonna add the garlic and the tomato paste and kind of move it around and cook out that tomato flavor. Looks really good. By the way, you might be wondering, oh, I can't flip like this at home. Yes, you can. Just take your pan and forward back. Don't use your wrists, it's not like this. It's just forward back, forward back. Try it right now, all right? Give it a shot. All right, so tomato paste is moved around. Paprika time. Okay, a good couple, maybe a tablespoon and a half of paprika. This dish is all about the paprika. And we're gonna let that kind of toast, right? That's gonna get really fragrant, delicious. It packs a little bit of heat. Look at this color. That looks awesome. I'll do it nice time. Five minutes, beautiful. I'm gonna grab some mustard. This is gonna give it some sharpness. I've got about a, maybe a tablespoon of mustard there. Judge or don't, I don't care. Really good mustard, Sir Kensington's the bomb. I will eat it raw like that. All right, so mustard's in. You can kind of imagine all the flavor, super comforting, super kind of rich, I love that. 
And now I'm gonna add some cream. Really good heavy cream is crucial here. It's gonna cook down to be this kind of gravy, right? This kind of reddish gravy that we all know with goulash. You getting that, Howard? Mm. See how it's kind of just bleeding into it? It's really good. That looks really good. All right, now I'm gonna add some salt, right? So the cream's in, so I'm gonna season it up. I kind of feel like I need some greenery on this. Howard, can you come with me to the, to the outside or is that not possible? Let's give it a shot. Really? Absolutely. Okay. okay. I don't know um, what's about to happen, but here we go. Okay, I'm just grabbing some parsley. This is my outside, if anyone's curious. And the only thing I have left growing is parsley. Can you come around the back? Is it possible? All right, I've got some. It's not bad, right, Howard? I told you, I mean, I've never had a house before. I've never been able to grow stuff before, so this is exciting for me. All right. Parsley. Under the sink we go. Look at that goulash. Come on. With this, I'm just gonna kind of chop it up. Nice and chunky. Don't worry about the technique. Just kind of get those leaves out there. All right, let's try this. This looks insane. Hold, why do it end? Why don't I make this? Why don't I make this? I'm adding more cream because I want more of the kind of gravy, but holy shnikes, that is good. That is really, really good, like different good. Awesome, all right, this is exactly where I want it. Kind of flowy, and if you don't have extra cream, just add a splash of water. I've got three minutes, so I'm okay. Smoky, ooh, a little bit more salt. You know me by now, all right. Let's check our rice. Don't you love a good rice facial? Look at this, Howard, look at that. Come on, fluffy rice. All right, let's grab a plate. Let's do this thing. Plate this bad boy up. So, grab some of this brown rice. I think typically it's like with egg noodles or something like that, but we've got rice today. And you want a pretty plain kind of base to this, right? You don't want anything that's too combative with what you're doing. Oh, a little parsley got here. It's cool. All right. Then the goulash. Look at this thing. Stick to your ribs. Completely vegetarian. Typically with beef, but mine has mushrooms. Look at that. I mean, that over anything is gonna be delicious, but over this rice, it's gonna kind of just soak it all up. It's really good. So I always start with kind of just making sure that there's a good amount of mushroom, and then I just take the pan and just get the gravy everywhere and anywhere. This is a rich dish, all right? This is a rich one, but it's so beautiful. And celebrates a humble mushroom, which I think never really gets celebrated. Take a little bit of this parsley over the top. And that, my friends, let's see. With a minute 42 left on the clock is goulash from scratch. Really stick to your ribs, comfort, gorgeous food. I hope you guys love this recipe and really try it out. It's a rock star of a dish. It kind of blew me away. Um, and to check out more dishes like this, to dive deep into seconds, head to readyforseconds.com right now.